Hey guys, this is Jay. As you can see around me here, in uh, typical Kentucky fashion, we have gone from uh, mustache freezing sub-zero temperatures to short sleeve and windows down temperature in just a few days. <laughs> so that's actually been a huge blessing to me because it allowed me to, of course, get the cold start footage. And now that the roads have uh, all the snows melted off of them and they're, well, they were dry, it has rained recently. Um, I've been able to get a lot of footage of my truck to show you just how much of a difference the EFI live tuning I've done has made. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to share that with you guys because it's honestly a game changer. I mean, the, the truck is a completely different vehicle um, than it was before I did this, um, as you'll see in the comparison footage that I have. Um, and so that's, that's largely what this video is going to be about. I'm not intending on... Uh, getting into a deep dive of, of how EFI Live works and all the changes that I've made. Um, but based on comments that I received on the Cold Start video, that does seem like something you guys would want to watch. So I do have plans to do, you know, in-depth videos on uh, how the software works, what I've changed in both the uh, engine controller and transmission controller, um, as well as doing videos like that for other platforms. Um, so like I, I recently tuned on my buddy's LBZ Duramax, um, so I will uh, try to work with him to, to get that truck featured and show you how the LBZ controller works. And then as a tangent, this is my stepdad's expedition behind me. Um, I've also purchased HP tuners, which not only opens up the ability to tune for power strokes, but it, it basically lets me tune all domestic vehicles. Um, and so this, this expedition is a three valve Triton. And if you've heard of those, then you know that they're notorious for having phaser issues. And so I may do a, a, a tuning tangents video where I go over the quick change that we made in HP tuners to, um, to zero out all the tables that control those phasers in, in the attempt to quiet them down. Um, so that will be a separate video. But uh, before I get into the footage, I do wanna just pop the hood here and kind of remind everyone the inline tuner set up so let me flip the camera around so this box right here is an inline tuner and as you can see with these connectors right here it is intercepting all of the signals that go to the engine computer and the transmission computer and and this is active so it's important to know that all of the added power from this can be removed in a moment's notice if it sees any issues issues meaning EGT because there is a thermocouple that it's watching and also transmission slippage. This has access to the transmission shaft speed sensors because it is intercepting all those signals and if it sees the transmission becoming overwhelmed it can pull power. So in large part what I have done with EFI Live is make the base calibration more responsive. I made the truck drive the way I want to, respond to the pedal the way I want to, and in large part, all the extra power is coming from this. Um, I, I have added about 10% more fuel. It's not necessarily power. Um, that's how the engine controller works in these. It's, it's completely fuel-based, not torque-based like newer stuff. Um, which I, So I'll, I'll show that in depth in a later video. But in large part, this is a, a truck that is not making much more power in the base calibration. It's just a lot more responsive. And I think this next uh, comparison clip will show that to you. All right, guys, I'm out on the road and I wanted to do a few A to B tests just so you guys can see how much different the truck is with my tune on it. Um, to be complete, I'm gonna do uh, before and after tune, both with and without the Economine tuner turned up. So this first one right here is stock tune with the Economine off. Um, I'm gonna turn the corner and stop at that pole up there and I'm gonna floor it and stay in it until about 60 miles an hour. And I'm gonna do this whole thing uh, uncut. So you can be absolutely sure the only thing that I'm changing is uh, the tune on the computer and this knob to the left of my steering wheel. So, gotta deal with traffic since my uh, drag strip is a public road. But uh, we'll get you the footage. Here's the first one. You'll really see how sluggish this thing is with this factory tune. Because when I put my foot in it, it doesn't go anywhere. All right, three, two, one. I'm on the floor. Tell you 
about that one. It does not like being floored in the factory tune. So I'm going to spin around to the same place and turn the Econo mind up. And uh, after that, I'll park and reflash the computer with my complete tune on it. And you'll see the difference in response. Started, and I'm going to turn the Econo Mind up to level six. Let's see if you can hear these clicks. There's level two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to pull around the corner and do the same thing again. All right, looks like we got a straight shot now. So, same thing here, level six. Three, two, one, floor it. see me get under the hood here because I need to unplug the Banks tuner before I reflash the ECM. Since the Banks tuner is in between the ECM and OBD2 port, I don't want this EFI Live flash to mess with the Banks tuner in any way. I don't know if you can see it, but it's as simple as that. I just hooked the laptop up through the OBD2 interface and flashed the tune on. It takes about a minute. Here's the interface right here, USB, OBD2. Alright, just like that, those clicking sounds from the dash mean it's done, so I turn the key off, start a countdown on the screen for 15 seconds, and once that's done, I can go back and hook the bank tuner back up. Alright, got a green light under the hood on the bank tuner, so we are ready to go. Banks tuner back down into level one, so I'm going to turn the corner and show you how much different my tune is. We're at the telephone pole. Three, two, one, go. There's 60. I don't know if you guys could hear it, but I was actually peeling tired just a little bit there. Some of the stark difference between the uh, original tune and mine could also be because I have tuned the transmission and it might be playing weird with it because those, those two stock tune pulls uh, were extremely sluggish in first gear, even more sluggish than I remember. Um, but then again, this tune is ridiculously good compared to the, uh, the factory one. So now it's time to show you just how much better this tune is with the economy turned up. All right, we're back to where we started. More traffic, just the time of the day. Here's the Banks tuner. There's level two, three, 
four, five, and six. Once this car gets far enough ahead, I'll chase them down. <laughs> Level six in three, two, one, go. And that was really neat right there because I don't know if you could hear it, but the inline tuner actually pulled power out in fourth gear. So it didn't like something, and that just further goes to show you that. If you add power like that, only in EFI Live, you will hurt your transmission. Because that right there would have been limp mode if that inline tuner did not pull power like that. So, man oh man. I, uh, you'll be able to see it in the rear view. There's a bit of smoke, so uh, my tune is still a little bit broken. But it is so much better than it was before. All right. Well, I hadn't intended on getting into the software side of things in this video, but after watching the comparison footage that I had, <laughs> it really made me look like a hero. And so I wanted to clarify some things that, though that was the stock tune, uh, my truck is anything but stock. You know, I have all of the exhaust side has been replaced and most of, most of the intake side has been replaced. Um, and that includes a, a bigger turbo. Um, so the way my truck responds when it has the stock tune on it is not indicative of what a stock truck with the stock tune would respond like. Um, so I have the software open here because I want to show you the main parameter that affects how the truck responds to the, the pedal. And that is the max injected fuel quantity based on the mass airflow sensor. And so as I was saying in the intro, this truck is completely fuel based, but there are other tables that come into play that limit the amount of fuel that can go into the cylinders based on other parameters. And this is the most uh, aggressively limiting table here because it limits the fuel based on how much incoming air the mass airflow sensor is seeing. And so, you know, this isn't going to mean much until I pull up my modified table, but basically you can see how the factory table, um, it's technically a 3D map, but I have uh, taken the most aggressive column and made it into a 2D chart here. So you can see how it, it has to go all the way up to 1.6 grams per cylinder before the uh, MM3 or cubic millimeters per stroke goes up to 127. Um, so that doesn't mean much again until I show you this next picture. So here's mine. Um, I have made this table uh, completely linear all the way across the RPM range. So this truly is just a 2D chart. But you'll see with mine that I am at 125 uh, cubic millimeters per cylinder at 0.8 grams per cylinder. So the same amount of fuel with half the amount of air. And um, now flipping back to the stock one, you'll see that the first two points in my chart are actually significantly less aggressive um, than the factory one. That's an attempt to keep it from blowing smoke, but you know, as you saw in that comparison footage, there's still a little bit of smoke in it, so this, I'm still tweaking on these. Uh, this is, <laughs> this seems to be like an endless amount of tweaking to get this dialed in right. Um, but essentially, the, the first two numbers of 5 and 25 limit the amount of fuel enrichment whenever there's basically no boost. Um, and then very quickly after that, the boost buildup will allow just a dump of fuel into the cylinders. And that is what makes the truck very responsive. Um, so you can, like if you have a stock tune and you just copied this uh, MIFQ mass airflow sensor table into your tune and that's all you changed, it would drive completely differently. There may be some other tables in play, but in large part, this right here is what the difference is between the stock tune and my tune, and it's quite radical. All right, so I showed you guys just how much better my engine tune is. 
now that we're out on the regular road and driving like a regular person I'm going to show you how much different the transmission tune is hopefully you'll be able to hear it um, but I have configured the torque converter to essentially drive this transmission like it's a manual so similar to how it behaves in tow haul it will lock the converter early on in second gear and keep it locked all the way through the upshifts and once I get up to speed I'll try to show you how I have it set up to where if you push the pedal a little bit, it will unlock the converter, and then if you push it harder, it'll downshift. So, though the converter is locked and you are driving at low RPM, you have not lost responsiveness. So, there's second gear, and there's lock. Here, we're cruising 45 miles an hour at about 1300 RPM. If I push into it a little bit, it unlocks. If I push farther, it downshifts. It locks the converter. And then we're back in fifth. Just like that, I wasn't even on the floor. So it it is very, very responsive and very drivable, even though it keeps the converter locked under most circumstances. Right now that we're in town and the speed limit's a bit slower, I wanted to show you that every gear will respond like that, not just fifth gear. So I'm going to get up to 35 miles an hour, which will have us in fourth gear. And then you'll see that just like back there, it will unlock the converter and downshift when I press even harder on the pedal. that really showed you just what's capable with EFI Live on these trucks. Um, obviously the amount of power that the inline tuner added, I could have just tuned that in with EFI Live, but as you saw on that uh, level six pull, that amount of power in that situation was a bit overwhelming to the transmission and it could have caused problems if that was all done in the base tune. So that's why I've done a lot of preaching in the comments and in that Economind video about just how powerful these inline tuners are, well, the good ones, like the Banks Power ones, um, in their ability to add power in a way that is safe and, and preserves your investment in the drivetrain. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm going to be doing uh, some deep dives into the engine controller and transmission controller just so you can see everything that I've done. You know, I'm, I'm not, I have no intention on keeping this stuff secret, you know, so if if you're adventurous like me and you want to go purchase the EFI Live tuning kit and, and you have an LB7 um, or any of the other vehicles that I uh, will hopefully be able to feature on this channel, um, then, then you can just copy and paste the numbers that I show on the screen. Um, and that's Now, I can't guarantee that they'll be safe for your vehicle, even though they were safe for the ones that I have uh, flashed them into, um, but they can be places to start. And, and, you know, you also can use the methodology that I show to create your own tunes and start from small changes and work your way up, which is exactly what I did with this. Um, the, that mass air, airflow curve, that was just, you know, a, a straight shoot up into the fuel. Um, there was a lot of iteration on that before I made it that aggressive. So, yeah, it, it takes time. Um, but I'm willing to share everything that I have learned throughout the time that I've spent uh, tuning this truck and, and anything else uh, that I've had the pleasure to tune. So um, I will try to, especially in the, the diesel vehicles, I will try to, to record um, what I've done if I'm able to tune any other vehicles, like that LBZ that I mentioned. 
Um, and of course, if any of you all would like me to tune your, your truck, um, preferably somewhere that is local to, to me in Lexington, Kentucky, so I can do this in person. I'm not, I'm not opposed to sending tunes, you know, out over email, but I would really prefer to be in the passenger seat while this is happening, uh, because direct communication with the, the owner of the vehicle, especially as they're driving it, uh, is, is, is critical in my mind. Um, at least since I'm a street tuner, I don't have uh, a dyno to, to strap these things down to. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that this video gets some attention because I do not think anyone is using flash tuning in combination with inline tuning. And, and I really hope these comparisons show you just how powerful that combination can be. And, uh, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe Banks Power will get on board with this and we can see what we can do inside the Econo mine to make this even more capable. So, uh, as always guys, thanks for watching and remember, if it's smoking, it's broken. <laughs>